Hello, I trust that you're doing well. Welcome to Miss Fountain channel, your go-to destination for insightful and engaging educational content. Here, we explore a wide range of topics, from science and history to technology and beyond. Prepare to expand your knowledge and spark your curiosity with our carefully crafted videos. Subscribe now and join us on our journey of discovery. In today's session, we're going to look at blood pattern analysis. Uh, we find that blood is the most common and important evidence in the world of criminal justice, as well as its role in forensic serology. It also has applications in uh, forensic toxicological investigations. We're going to begin with a, a brief interpretation of what blood pattern analysis is. And we find that blood pattern analysis is the examination of the distribution patterns of blood stains in order to provide an interpretation of the physical events which gave rise to their origin and is based on the premise that they are characteristic of the forces that created them. We're going to define a few terms that are found in a blood pattern analysis. We're going to begin with sputter. These are blood stains created from the application of force to the area where the blood originated. The second term is origin or source. This is the place from where the blood spatter came from. We also have angle of impact. This is the angle at which a blood droplet strikes a surface. We have parent drop. This is a drop from which a satellite spatter originates. We have satellite sputters. These are small drops of blood that break from the parent sputter when the blood droplet hits a surface. We also have our spines. And spines are pointed edges of a stain that radiate out from the sputter. And spines are important because they can help determine the direction from which the blood traveled. I'm going to look at uh, categories of blood stains. We have four categories that is passive, contact or transfer, projected stains, as well as void patterns. I'm going to begin with passive. And these are blood stains that are created by, so by force of gravity alone. They include drops, drip patterns, pools, it is in. We have contact or transfer blood stains. They are created when a wet bloody surface is in contact with a secondary surface. This includes maybe a contact bleeding, a smear, a smudge, it is in. We have uh, projected stains. And these projected stains arise from direct sprays onto surfaces from a distance. They occur when energy has been transferred to the blood source. For example, maybe opening of a major artery, and this can cause an uh, impact sputter. We also have void as the fourth category of blood stain. And it's created when an object blocks the deposition of blood sputter onto a surface. For example, maybe between the victim and a wall, there is a, a cupboard. Maybe there is a There's a gunshot and blood spreads onto the cupboard and onto the wall, but it won't go to the area directly behind the the, cup, the cupboard because the that cupboard is blocking the wall. So on the wall there'll be there'll be blood pattern or there'll be blood spatter apart from the area that is covered by the cupboard. That's what we call a void pattern. And from the analysis of a blood stain, we can get a lot of information. And these are some of them. We have type and velocity of the weapon. That is the type of the weapon, of the weapon that was used. You have the number of blows. You can get this by getting the lines caused by the blood stains. The lines of the blood stains, so the drops, the drips 
can get the number of blows. The hardiness of the assailant, that is whether they are right-handed or left-handed, and this is going to be dependent on the position of the, the assailant and the victim, and the side of the which the blood pattern of the spatter is. The position and movement of the victim and assailant in, the, in this the spines can help in determining the direction from which the blood traveled you can also get which wounds were inflicted first and also the type of injuries maybe if it was a major injury that it, that affected a major artery where there will be projected uh, blood, blood projected blood stain patterns or maybe just a minor injury where there will be passive blood stain patterns yeah and with that you can tell the type of injuries that were there you can also tell how long ago the crime was committed and also whether the death was immediate or delayed and it's also important to note that when it comes to height and size of blood drops the higher the drop that is the the greater the height the higher the drop the greater the velocity and the larger the diameter when it comes to the surface and blood stains or the blood drops find that the harder and less porous the surface the less the blood drop will break apart the softer and more porous the surface the more a blood drop will break apart and it's also important to note that the pointed end of the blood stain faces the direction of travel the pointed end of the blood stain faces the direction of travel another important point to note we have cast off in versus uh, arterial spalting when that cast off is created by force of action greater than gravity for arterial spalting is created when, a, when blood exits the body and uh, pressure from a compromised artery and evidence that can be derived from cast of patterns include the position of assailant and victim during the attack the direction the weapon traveled the approximate height of the attacker the impact angle of spatter as well as the convergence convergence point we have an important term here that is expirated blood pattern and this is a pattern that's created by blood that is expelled from the mouth or nose from an internal injury. That's what we are going to look at in this session. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've gained valuable insights and knowledge from today's video. Don't forget to subscribe for more enlightening content. And remember, learning never stops. Until next time. Stay curious and keep exploring. Thank you for watching.